भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम भगवद गीता एज इट इज चैप्टर सिक्सटीन Text four, five, and six. So, I'll read text four and five, and then we'll chant six. Page six, 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 sixty-two, six hundred sixty-two. Text four. Pride, arrogance, conceit, anger, harshness, ignorance. These qualities belong to those of demonic nature, O son of Brita. Purport. In this verse, the royal road to hell is described. Demoniacs want to make a show of religion, advancement in spiritual science, although they do not follow the principles. They are always arrogant or proud and possessing some type of education or so much wealth. The desire to be worshipped by others and demand respectability, although they do not command respect. Over tri- trifles, trifles, they be- become very angry, speak harshly, not gently. They do not know what should be done and what should not be done. They do not. They do not. They do everything whimsically, according to their own desires. And they do not recognize any authority. These demonic qualities are taken on from on by them from the be, from the beginning of their bodies in the wombs of their mother, and as they grow, they manifest all these inauspicious qualities. Text number five. The transcendental qualities are conducted to liberation, whereas the demonic qualities make for bondage. Do not worry, O son of Pandu, for you are born with divine qualities. Purport: Lord Krishna encourages Arjuna by telling him that he was not born with demonic qualities. His involvement in the fighting was not demoniac, because he was considering the pros and cons. He was considering whether respectable persons such as Bhishma, Drona, should be killed or not. So he was not acting. Under the influence of anger, false prestige, or harshness, therefore he was not of the quality of demons. Prakatya, a military man, shooting arrows at the enemy is considered transcendental. He frames as such a duty as demoniac. Therefore, there was no cause for Arjuna to lament. Anyone who performs the regular principles of the different orders of life is transcendent situated. Now we can read text number six. Dvo puta saka loka smin vaiva asura eva cha vaiva asura eva cha vaiva vishtura sa pakta ashram Vavudra Bhuta Sago Loka Asmin Vaiva Asura Eva Cha Vaiva Vishtara Sara Prokta Asuram Partha Meshinu Oh, 
Maharaj, word for word, Dual Tu Bhuta Sarga, created living beings, okay, in the world, that means this, Daiva, Godly, Ashura, Demoniac, Eva, certainly, Ta and Daiva, the Divine, Mr. Shaha, at great length, Bhukta said, Ashram, the Maniac, Bhartha, Asana Prita, May, from me, to you, just here. Translation purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Of Sanna Prita, in this world there are two kinds of created beings. One is called divine, the other is called demoniac. I already explained to you at length the divine qualities. Now hear from me of the demoniac. Purport. Lord Krishna having assured Arjuna that he was born with divine qualities is now describing the demoniac way. The conditioned living entities are divided into two classes in this world. Those who are born with divine qualities follow the regulated life, and that is to say, they abide by the injunctions of the scriptures and by the authorities. One should perform duties in light of authorized authoritative scriptures. This mentality is called divine. One who does not follow the regular principles as are laid down in scriptures, who acts according to his whims, is called the maniac or sure. There is no other criteria but obedience to the regular, regular principles of the scriptures. It is mentioned in Vedic literature that both the demigods and the demons are born of the Prajapati. The only difference is that one class obeys the Vedic injunction, and the other does not. Amagana Kim Dasha Janaja Sakaya Saksu Nimitam Zena Tazme Shri Guru Venuha Sri Shaitanya Manobhishtam Tapitam Yena Bhutale Swaya Rupa Kadamayam Tanti Swapa Tanti Kam Sri Krishna Shaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adreta Gradhar Sri Vasudev Gaur Bhaktivinoda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Translation of Sana Prita. In this world, there are two kinds of created beings. One is called divine, the other called demoniac. I've already explained to you at length the divine qualities. Now, hear from me of the demoniac. Is anybody here properly? Can you hear? Anyway, this is chapter 16. And um, verses not 1 through 9 talk about <coughs> transcendental qualities, transcendental qualities, and demoniac qualities. So the first three verses discuss divine qualities. Fearlessness, purification of one's existence, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, study of Vedas, austerity, simplicity, nonviolence, Truthfulness, 
freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, aversion to fault finding, compassion for all living entities, freedom from the covetedness, gentleness, modesty, steady determination, vigor, forgivingness, fortitude, cleanliness, and freedom from envy, and from the passion for honor, these transcendental qualities of Sanabhata belong to godly men and divine, endowed with divine qualities. So here it says, <coughs> um, so here we're describing the demoniac qualities, pride and arrogance and conceit. Someone becomes proud, it says, even a beggar is proud of his penny. So pride is there, and pride and arrogance, pretty much the same thing. Um, person that gets a, gets a good education, he becomes <coughs> arrogant. And a person who has a lot of money, he gets, becomes conceited. So, three qualities, pride, arrogance, and conceit, they're pretty similar, three qualities altogether. But, uh, when man, when we go to preach, we sell books to people, the people that have money, they're conceited, and they would say, they would tell, say that, tell us that we should get a job and they didn't want to give a donation because they thought we were, were uh, just beggars on the street. But we say, we have a job and that's to uh, make you Krishna conscious. That's our job. And because we don't live like they do, um, <coughs> we are not trying to enjoy sense gratification like they do, they can't understand uh, how it is with that we're uh, living so nicely and have so much cars and money and everything without working. Even in India, they accuse us of being with the CIA. The prophet says, what's the CIA doing in Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement? Because the CIA, they don't get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. They don't go on the streets chanting, doing Harinam, Sankirtan. Anyway, these are different kinds of people. And you find them in all, all walks of life, the demoniac kinds of people. The anger, harshness, and ignorance are the other qualities. And you find that people... Uh, easily become angered and harshness and ignorance, especially when people take intoxication, they become um, angry. Someone takes alcohol, especially alcohol. Someone takes alcohol and in the mode of goodness, they go to sleep. Someone in the mode of passion wants to fight with everyone. And someone in the mode of ignorance will cry a lot. So this is the uh, thing they try to they take intoxication so they can be happy, but it has an opposite effect. So many people, when they get intoxicated, they want to fight with everyone and become angry. So this is the maniac. So that's why we say no intoxication, no uh, no intoxication, including coffee, tea, or cigarettes. Because these things ruin austerity and ruin uh, any kind of possibility for having spiritual life. So Arjuna, uh, from the very beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, didn't want to fight the battle of Kuchetra. Um, yeah, this is the 16th chapter He's still not convinced that he shouldn't fight. So, in this 
Krishna is telling him that you you have divine qualities. You know, your fighting is not demoniac. People in this world today, because there's so much sinful activities, especially animal slaughter, and there's war uh, all over the world. And the war between men and nations is a direct reaction to the slaughtering of so many innocent animals. So Arjuna <laughs> position wasn't like that. He was uh, says in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter one, fourth canto, that Arjuna and Krishna are expansions of Nara Narayan Rishi. Narayan is Lord Vishnu and Narayan Naraya Nar Naraya Naraya is Arjuna. And so Narayan is the Supreme Person of God and Arjuna is the Unloyed Devotee. So Arjuna um, couldn't have been uh, bewildered and, and but due to the potency of Yoga Maya and for the sake of Krishna wanted to speak the Bhagavad Gita, the Dhaya Dhaya Dharmasha, and even Bharata Bharata. Krishna says he comes to uh, deliver the devotees and to annihilate the demons. When there's an overburden of the demoniac people in the world, and Krishna comes or sends his representatives to, to uh, relieve the burden of the earth. We see in the case of Parasaram, he was a Shaktavesh avatar and he uh, killed the demoniac kings in the world. 21, he went to 21 different kingdoms and killed them all with his, hat, with his hatchet, with his axe. And he went into the speed of the mind. When he got tired, he went to the speed of the wind. But he had to do that because they were all demoniac and they didn't follow the scriptures or very conjunctions. So Krishna came and Lord Parasaram, other incarnations come for the same purpose, to reestablish religious principles. Now, Lord Brahma, he's the original creator. From Lord Brahma, uh, created so many different kinds of living entities. And he created both the divine living entities and he creates the demigods and the demons in the heavenly planets, eight kinds of living entities. But uh, that's why there's always a conflict between the demigods and the demons in Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, this chapter describes the text 7 through 20 will describe the more and more detail about demoniac uh, persons. So he wanted to convince Arjuna <coughs> that he was not uh, being demoniac or his fighting was not demoniac because he was trying to uh, figure out or understand what uh, what was the right thing to do? People in this world don't know what is to be done and what is not to be done. And so they act whimsically. And it says that the demonic qualities are there in the womb. The child in the womb has these demonic qualities. And we see in the kings story of King Vena. King Vena, uh, when he was born, he was such a terrible child. And when he played with his friends, he'd have an argument, he would kill them. And when he grew up and became the king, he ruled the people in the wrong way. And so the Brahmins tried to advise him how to rule the people properly. But because he was a demon and he had all the money qualities, 
he didn't listen to the Brahmins and so they killed him by the sound by mantra, the high sound of the words. So many uh, deep, big big demons have appeared in this world, like Rani Kashipu, Ranyaksha, Ravana, Kumbhakarna, so many demons and uh, demons they like to give trouble to other living entities. Rani Kashipu terrorized the whole universe. Everyone was uh, had to show respect to Rani Kashipu except for Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma. So uh, this is going on and uh, today the world is run by uh, demonic people who uh, make problems for everyone and are not interested in the welfare of the, of the citizens. When Lord Ramachandra was king, the real king of the world, that was in Treta Yuga, but he was such a good king, it was like Satya Yuga. In Satya Yuga, practically 100% of the people are God conscious. In Treta Yuga, 75% are God conscious. In Dwarpa Yuga, 50%. And in Kali Yuga, 25%, or practically less than that. Practically not, nobody is uh, following is God conscious or following any uh, scripture. Here it says that in verse 4, this verse, the royal road to hell is described. One time a priest went to visit some coal miners in Ireland. And he said, if you don't accept Jesus Christ, you're going to have to go to hell. So they said, who is Jesus Christ? What's his number? What's his, uh, uh, where does he work? They thought he was one of the miners. They didn't, never heard of Jesus Christ. And then they said, what's hell? They said, well, hell is dark and damp and cold. And they're working in those conditions anyway. So they didn't think hell was so bad. But then he said, there's no newspaper. And today he would have said, there's no cell phones. So they said, oh, we don't want to go there. No internet, no cell phones. We don't want to go there. So that's the world road to hell. And people don't know what hell is. The fifth canto described the there's 14 planetary systems, seven up and seven down, and then below the planet, near the Raja Ocean, and is the hellish planets, where people are sent by Yamaraj to suffer for their sinful activities. And there's many th th thousands, hundreds of thousands of hellish, hellish planets where people are suffering for their sinful activities. One person, was not allowed to enter the kirtan of Srivas Thakur's house. Every night, Lord Chaitanya would have kirtan at Srivas Thakur's house, but only the devotees, on his unalloyed devotees, were allowed to enter. So many of the people outside became envious. So one person, his name was Gopal Chapala, he took the articles to worshiping goddess Durga, Kadyani and put them on the doorstep of Srivas Thakur. So when Srivas Thakur opened his door in the morning and saw these things, he called all the neighbors and said, look, I'm a Shakti worshiper. I'm a demigod worshiper. Of course, they knew it wasn't true. But they, had, they threw all the articles away and cleaned the place with cow dung and cow urine. The Gopal Chapala committed Vaishnava Aparad, and he got leprosy. And since leprosy is contagious, he had to live outside of the village in the forest. One day, when Mahaprabhu came by, he said to Mahaprabhu, you're the Supreme Personality Godhead, I'm suffering from this leprosy, kindly relieve me of my suffering. Mahaprabhu became angry and said, you've offended my devotee, I'll not relieve you of your suffering, now you're suffering now, 
but Yamaraj has eight, 84 lakhs or 840,000 8, different kinds of punishment and you have to go through every single one of them. So <coughs> this one, it means what means to go to hell. But people don't believe hell, heaven or hell. They think it's mythology. But the people on this planet, if they're sinful, they go to Yamaraj. And it says the planet of Yamaraj is near to the earth. And there, uh, Yamaraj, he uh, judges everyone, decides what kind of punishment you're going to get for your sinful activities. But people think they're not responsible for their lives. The human being is responsible to see that his next life is in a better position than he's in now. But people think that you only have one life and that you should enjoy as much as possible. One man heard that he had two years to live. It was that television program. So he went all over the world trying to enjoy sense gratification in so many different ways. But uh, he didn't understand that, that he, at the time of death, there you know, smen yata de komaram yovinam dra, yata de on dra, patir dra, tata na muyate, that we go from boy to youth to old age, at the time of death, and then the living entity takes another body. It says, like the air, like the living entity uh, goes from one body to another, like the air carries the aroma. It's very subtle. So the soul is accompanied by the uh, mind intelligence and false ego. So whatever qualities one has in this life, it go takes with him to his next life. And Krishna says, Sabat Shaham Ridishani Visto, that I am in everyone's heart, for me comes knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness. So the living entity we don't remember being in the womb, we don't remember our suffering because the super soul make the makes it so we, we forget that we suffered so much. So in this way, we mean bound up in the uh, cycle of repeated birth and death. So people think that there's nothing after this life, that you only go around once in life, so you should enjoy as much as possible in this life. So we see uh, when one, someone's young and healthy, he's in, Enjoy very, you can enjoy very nicely. But when you get older, the, more old, the older you get, the less you can enjoy, the more the suffering is there. The body doesn't work right, the eyes are not working, the ears don't work, the teeth don't work, the stomach doesn't work. But if we were meant to enjoy, then, you, then when you got older, you'd be able to enjoy more and more. If that was the purpose of life, but it doesn't work that way. When you, the older you get, the less you can enjoy, the more you have to suffer. So old people are suffering, and they have to, someone has to take care of them, and they have to have a special diet, and they have to, so many things that you have, can't walk properly, and so it's not any fun to be old. But for a devotee, we welcome old age, because um, we can practice Krishna Consciousness by chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. And when you come, uh, try to come to the mode of pure goodness. When you come to the mode of goodness, then it says in the 11th canto that the mode of passion, ignorance, they melt away. And when one's in pure goodness, then he can understand that he's not this body, and they were eternal servants of Krishna. So demonic people, uh, they don't know these things. So that's why we have to give them the Bhagavad Gita, try to educate them. So even though one may be uh, born with the demonic qualities, if his parents are devotees, they can educate him and make him a devotee. In the case of Ajabil, he was born with divine qualities, and in his childhood, he was into, 
he is a very uh, obedient devotee of Lord Narayan. Uh, but uh, somehow or other he got bad association. He saw one prostitute enjoying with a sudra, one sudrani enjoying with a sudra, a low class man, and became attached to the prostitute. And therefore, <coughs> he gave up his godly qualities, his good qualities, and took on all bad qualities. So it, can, it works either way. We're reading in the Srimad Bhagavatam about Pallad Maharaj, how he learned in the womb from Narada Muni, about, and how he, he was born with divine qualities, and how he preached to his classmates who were born with demoniac qualities and demoniac families. But because they were young boys, only five years old, they hadn't been contaminated by a bad association and demoniac qualities yet. So children don't usually uh, have, uh, you know, ch children have good and bad qualities, but it's according to your association. Birds of a feather flock together, you know. If you associate with a drunkard, then you become a drunkard. If you associate with thieves, you become a thief. If you associate with devotees, you become a devotee. So the qualities are there in a person, but they don't, they're not permanent. They can change. This way the Bhagavad Gita deals with five subject matters, and well, karma is the one of the subject matters that is, can be changed. You can change your karma. Other subject matters are permanent. Time, the living entity, the material nature, the Supreme Lord, and, uh, and uh, karma. But karma can be changed. Karma means action. For every action, there's a reaction. So at the time of initiation, uh, Guru Krishna Prasadi by Bhakti Lata Bij, the person receives the seed of devotional service and agrees to follow four regulated principles. No meeting, no gambling, no intoxication, no illicit sex. But Prabhupada was asked by his reporters what his uh, mission was, and he said he wanted to make first-class men, first-class people. So they asked him, what is a first-class person? He said, a first-class person who follows the four regulated principles. So uh, when someone becomes a devotee and his family are not devotees, they're not happy. The mother and father are not happy that they're a devotee. Their son, who is a drunkard and a uh, womanizer and a meat eater, had given up all these things. And they think there's something wrong with them. And a lot of times they <coughs> would uh, put their uh, children in mental hospitals. They thought they had gone crazy because they had taken on the uh, divine qualities. So we know that from uh, um, that it's not necessary to eat meat. They, a lot of people think that if you don't eat meat, you won't get enough protein and you'll become weak and uh, ruin your health. But we know that's not true. And Krishna says, Ishavasham Vadam Sarvam, once you only take that which is one's quota, and if you do that, then you can live for a long, healthy life. And the quota for human beings is uh, milk products, grains, fruits, vegetables. Krishna says, Patram Pus from Paloto Yam, Tyome Bhakti Apriyachati. He doesn't say that he, he says that's what we, he wants us to offer him. One devotee went to Indonesia to visit a temple, a demigod temple. And the priest said to the devotee that our temple is better than your temple. Because in your temple, you only offer flowers and fruits, fruits and flowers. But in our temple, we offer wine and meat. So our temple is better than yours. So <coughs> this is the uh, difference between uh, devotees and the demons. And gambling is not 
and the necessity because gambling means you're speculating and then you try to win a lot of money. If you lose a lot of money, then you're lamenting you for your whole life. People go to the gambling casinos with all their money, put it on a certain number, and they lose all their money, and then they're broke for the rest of their life, and they're lamenting the whole life that I did the wrong thing. And uh, intoxication doesn't help one in spiritual life. In the beginning, the, when Prabhupada went to Nara, people were taking LSD. And LSD uh, puts you in hallucination and makes you think you're, you're having a spiritual experience. So they asked Prabhupada if LSD was spiritual, and he said no, that you can't get a spiritual experience from something material. And we have, we don't say no sex life, we say no illicit sex. People in the world are, the whole world is going on for, for the desire to enjoy sex life because the material world is a perverted reflection of the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, there's also sex life, but that is nothing compared, nothing to do with the three modes of material nature. It's nothing to do with the, uh, it's not like the gross sex life in the material world. Spiritual sex life, Srirad and Krishna, Lord Chaitanya glorified this as the highest form of devotional service. This uh, loving exchange, Madhurya Bhav, Madhurya Leela. So, the material world, sex life is there, but it's a perfect reflection of the spiritual world. So devotees are, uh, there's, there's four ashrams, there's Brahmachari, Grihastha, Vanaprast, and Sannyas. In the Brahmachari ashram, there's no sex life, no associated with women. Brahmachari should only associate with women for important business, not otherwise. Then Brahmachari from five years old to, to 25 or so, he stays in the Brahmachari ashram and with the permission of his guru, and uh, he may want to get married. So he can get married, but in married life also is a, is a license for sense gratification, but the restriction is there also. That one can have sex life once a month only for the purpose of getting God conscious children. When uh, Jarasandha uh, was killed by Bhima. Arjuna, Krishna, and Bhima went to uh, Jarasandha dressed as Brahmins. And Jarasandha couldn't recognize them, but he said, I, I think I've seen these people before. But they're not Brahmins because they had, they had deep voices and big bodies. And, but anyway, since they came to me, and, uh, and Bra he was charitable, disposed to Brahmins, even though he was a demon. So he said, okay, I will give you whatever you want. Ask for anything. Even if you want my body, I'll give you that. So they said, well, actually, we're not Brahmins. We're, this is Krishna, this is Arjuna, this is Bhima. And we've come here to uh, have a duel with you. So, um, they did that, but Jarasandha wouldn't fight with Krishna because he said Krishna was a coward because he left the battlefield and took shelter in the sea. And he wouldn't fight with Arjuna because he was, wasn't of equal strength. But he fought with Bhima. And Bhima defeated him and killed him. And then Jarasandha had in prison 20,800 kings because they failed to show respect to him. He was very powerful. He was a Maharati and he had so much power that he could imprison so many kings. And uh, he did Krishna, they sent a messenger to Krishna and Dwarka that, uh, that he should come and save them. So Krishna did that and when he liberated all the kings, they were uh, very poorly dressed, they were dirty, and their 
body had luster had diminished from lack of proper diet, and so they, he rejuvenated them. And then he told them that you don't go back to your kingdom. Now you're devotees. Now I tell, don't go back to your kingdom and have sex with children for the, just for sense gratification. So don't have illicit sex. He told them not to have illicit sex anymore. The well, kings are illicit, are used to having many wives and having sex all, uh, all the time. So Krishna told them that this was not proper. So this is the difference between devotees and the demons. And uh, the demons, it says here, they demand respect, but they do not command respect. So there's a difference. Uh, if you act in a proper way, if you're like Srila Prabhupada was the founder of Charya, he didn't demand respect because but he commanded respect, it means he acted in such a way that people respected him. And our sannyasis in our movement who are preaching and setting a good example, they also are uh, getting respect deserve, that they deserve that they deserve. Someone demands respect, but he may not deserve it. But someone who acts properly and commands, does get respect, commands respect, and says that a householder, if he doesn't uh, offer obeisances to a sannyasi, and when he sees him in the morning, he should fast for that day. So a devotee should be, uh, take the humble position and know uh, who to respect and who not, who not to respect. So here it talks about show bottle religion, and all over the world, there's so many different kinds of religion. It's called Kaitaba Dharma. So they asked Srila Prabhupada if he were, why he came to America to introduce an, another religion. He said, we have enough religions in this country. The Prabhupada said, I didn't come here to introduce an, another religion. I came here to teach people how to love God. Because other religions don't do that. And uh, they just... They follow the dogmatic. They uh, go to uh, religious principles and make a show of religion, but they don't really understand what religion is. When Lord Chaitanya was in uh, Vrindavan, he was in the going into ecstasy and he was jumping in the Yamuna. So his servant. Uh, thought it was not a good idea that Lord Chaitanya stay in Vrindavan, so they decided to take him to uh, to Alabad, around the Alabad, the Prayag. And on the way there, uh, Lord Chaitanya went into ecstasy and fell unconscious. So Lord Chaitanya had four servants with him, and at that time, ten soldiers came riding up, Turkish soldiers, and they thought that these four men were thieves and they had stolen all of Lord Chaitanya's property and gave him a, a drug called Dutura and poisoned him so he would die. So they, but the servants said, no, no, that's not true. He, he's just unconscious. When he comes back to consciousness, he'll tell you the real truth. So they waited some time, Lord Chaitanya came back to consciousness. He said, I'm a sannyasi, I don't have any possessions, and these men are my associates. And there was one man there who was a, wearing black, who was a, a priest of the uh, Turkish soldiers, and he had a conversation with Lord Chaitanya on the strength of the Koran. And Lord Chaitanya proved to, pointed out to him how he didn't understand the Quran, and how the Quran actually um, does delineate or uh, does describe devotional service and does describe that God's a person. So the ten Patana soldiers, when they got the associate of Lord Chaitanya and heard Vaishnava philosophy, they all became Vaishnavas, or devotees of the Lord. So other religions are there 
and people make a show of following religious principles, but they really don't know what religion is. In the Catholic Church, they, they have this once a week you go and confess your sins to the priest. He sits in a little booth, and when people come and, and say, I did this and that, but he doesn't tell them that they should stop sinning. So they do the same thing the next week. Every week they come and confess and they keep doing the same thing over and over again. It's like an elephant goes and takes a bath in the river and then as soon as he comes out of the river he throws dirt all over himself or sand all over himself. So that's not real religious principles. So only the Vedas, the Vedas give real religious principles. Dharma to Sakshat Bhagavat Pranitam. When Ajamil uh, chanted the name of Krishna, Narayan, the uh, Yama Duris came to arrest him because he was sinful. But then the Vishnu Duris came and said, no, you can't take this man because he chanted the name of God and he's free from his sins. So they were bewildered. They went back to Yamaraj and told him what happened. It's the first time it ever happened. It's someone who was sin they couldn't arrest someone who was sinful. So Yamaraj explained to them that real religious principles are enunciated in the Vedas. In the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita says, Vedanta Krit Veda Shaham. And Krishna says, I'm the compiler of the Vedas and all the Vedas. So Krishna is the goal of the Vedas. Or becoming God conscious is the goal of real religious principles. So people follow religious, say this for the sake of having some <coughs> uh, designation. For the whole material world is going on under false names and false forms. So if someone says I'm a Christian or I'm a Jew or I'm a Muslim, but this, there are only those things in name only. And we see that uh, Muslims are, can be very cruel and uh, demoniac. Of course, there's one billion Muslims in this world, but the terrorists, only a small percentage are actually terrorists. And, but they uh, have given a bad name to the whole Muslim community. And one lady was married someone who was not a Muslim, and she got stoned. They killed her by stoning her to death. So this is so-called uh, religions. So there's no religious tolerance in the Muslim religion. You can't change your religion. But the person that doesn't live in a Muslim country can take to devotional service and become a devotee. So we have uh, one devotee who has printed the books, Prabhupada's books, in the Rus different languages, Arabic and different kind, different Muslim languages. So people, when the people read our books, they become a very happy and they want to become devotees. So we can't go there and preach to them, but the books go there and preach to them. And this way, uh, people can start to take up the practice of Krishna consciousness. So here it says that Arjuna was, uh, didn't have to worry about being a, uh, having demoniac qualities because uh, he's the pure devotee of the Lord, Nityasiddha, eternal source of the Lord, but under the influence of Yoga Maya, he is put in this condition to teach people what is real religious principles and what should be done, what should what not should what one should not do. Even the mother and father of the children in this world can't tell the children what's right what's right or wrong, whether they should drink alcohol or smoke cigarettes or this or that. They they do it themselves so they can't tell their children not to do it. So one lady went to a yogi and said, can you tell my child, my son to stop eating sugar? So he said, okay, we'll come back in one week. 
So they came back in one week, and the yogi said to the boy, don't eat sugar. So he said, well, why didn't you tell him that in the first place? He said, I had to stop eating sugar first, and then I could tell him to stop eating sugar. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been effective. So people may tell people, they even they write on the package of cigarettes that it's dangerous to health, and they um, stop the advertising alcohol on television, but people still do all these things because they don't have any uh, proper guidance. And that very part of the party percent is saved by the Ubinet Janti Jagi and us cannot stop with Darshanaha. Bhagavad Gita says, once you approach a spiritual master, inquire from him, submissively render service unto him, he can impart knowledge unto you because he's seen the truth. So one must follow a bona fide spiritual master, someone in disciple succession. And there's only four bona fide disciple successions in this world. One from Lord Shiva, one from the four Kumaras, one from Lord Brahma, and one from Lakshmi. So we're in the Brahma, uh, Madhva, Sam, uh, Gaudiya, Sampradaya. So those four Sampradayas all agree on one point, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They may have different way of putting on tilak or different, uh, <coughs> different uh, standards than we have, but they all agree that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And if you're in one of those Sampradayas and you're following their rules, then that's a that's bona fide. Then you're living a religious life. If you don't follow a sampradaya, if you have a guru who's not in a sampradaya, then he's not a guru. He's a cheat, cheating cheater guru. There are many gurus in this world claiming to be Bhagavan or to be God, but they're cheating cheating people because this world is made up of two kinds of people: those who are cheaters and the cheated. So people want to be cheated and get a cheap guru. But Srila Prabhupada said, I could have had hundreds and billions of the followers if I was one of those cheap gurus. Because the cheap gurus don't give any, don't tell anyone they have to follow any principles. So it's easy to be a disciple of someone that doesn't tell you you have to give up gambling, intoxication, illicit sex, meat eating. But, uh, we're following the Vedic literature, we're following Srila Prabhupada's instructions, which was uh, in the line of Lord Chaitanya, Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And we are all, uh, here it says that people are born with the uh, divine qualities or demoniac qualities. So they criticize Prabhupada for making people from the West Brahmins, because people in the West are born with demoniac qualities. But in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna doesn't say Janma Karma, he says Guna Karma. That is according to the quality. It says in over and over again, Shaitanya Bhagavad and Shaitanya Jatamrita, if one is born in the family of a dog eater, if he takes on the qualities of a Vaishnav, he should be respected as a Vaishnav. And uh, when uh, Dvaita Acharya performed the Strata ceremony, supposed to feed Brahmins first. So he called Haridas Akkor, who was born in a Muslim family, and he said, Haridas Akkor, I want to feed you first. Haridas Akkor said, protested, so you can't feed me first. I'm not born in a Brahmin family. But Jaitacharya said, you're better than 10 million Brahmanas. So it's not by birth, whatever, you, by birth, one may be born in a uh, family of a high court judge, but he doesn't be, grow up and become a high court judge immediately unless he goes to school and becomes qualified to become a high court judge. So anyone who takes can be, no matter what, where is, what his birth is, it should not be, uh, it should not consider one's birth or previous life. Says Vaishnava Parad, it's even offense to criticize uh, the spiritual master even his previous life's activities we should not criticize because now he's a <coughs> he's a uh, saintly person and so therefore uh, it's very, we should be very careful not to blaspheme or criticize the Vaishnava, the voice of the Lord and 
here it says that people are demonic, they're on the raw road to hell. And also, if you criticize or blasphemy devotees, also, you will, there's a hell called Kumbhipaka, where people go for committing Vaishnava Parad. So we should be very careful that we don't commit Vaishnava Parad, that we always remain humble. Do not be sinitena, swarapi sisena, manina mandana, kirtanya sadari. In this way, if we're, I think ourselves lower than the straw in the street, more tolerant than a tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige, then you can chant in the holy name of the Lord continuously. So in this way, the Krishna conscious movement is true. It has the thankless task of uh, converting a society which was probably went to America and dressed as a Vaishnava. And no one knew what a Vaishnava was at that time. And, but he didn't care. He said that they, he was, uh, some people advised Prabhupada that you have to wear certain tie, certain pants, and uh, dress, Western dress, when you go to America. But Prabhupada said, no, I'm not going there to learn from them. I'm going there to teach them. So they said you had to wear pants and shirt, you had to eat with knife and fork, you had to do all the things Western people do. The Prabhupada said, no, I'm going there to teach them how to become Vaishnavas. So Prabhupada got the order from his spiritual master to preach in the English-speaking language. And uh, gradually he made, made devotees and taught us how to dress like devotees, wear tilak, and do all the things that devotees do. And gradually, well, now we're more and more socially acceptable. Of course, devotees have to be careful when they're preaching in certain places where the uh, governments are not favorable. So we can't go and dress like a devotee. But in most countries, it doesn't make any difference. If you go to America, Europe, Australia, it doesn't make any difference how you dress. No one will say anything because they're <coughs> it's freedom of religion. So everything, you have to judge things according to time, place, and circumstance. Anyway, the whole idea is to give people Krishna conscious, make people Krishna conscious, no matter uh, which way we do it. Especially in China, we see uh, many devotees are going to China, and China is a communist country, and uh, there's no religious freedom there. But, so they have to go on in disguise. But gradually it's becoming more open and more free. They can go there and have programs. And, but they have to be careful how they conduct themselves. But we see that uh, many of the people in the Chinese uh, world are becoming devotees. In this way, they're understanding how to live a human form of life. So human, the difference between human beings and animals is human beings, uh, animals eat, sleep, mate, and defend. But human beings have intelligence and therefore they can accept instructions and uh, follow, take, uh, adhere to good instructions which is given in Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, all Prabhupada's books. So therefore, Prabhupada stressed this importance of distributing books so that people all over the world in all different languages can become, take on divine qualities and give up their demonic qualities. So our time is finished. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Microphone.
whatever is in your destiny that you will get. You will get nothing more, nothing less than your destiny. Then how is that we can change our karmas? <laughs> Because we have free will. Your karma is there. Your destiny is there. You can't change that. If someone's destined to be rich, he's going to be rich. If someone's destined to be poor, he's going to be poor. But we have free will to choose whether we want to serve Krishna or whether we want to not serve Krishna. But that's our free will is limited. But our free will doesn't change our karma. Our karma stays the same. But when you take initiation, then the guru takes your karma. But the fan, when you turn off the fan, it continues to spin for some time. So we still have to suffer reaction from the past karma. But if we're following strictly, then now we're not creating new karma. So this is how the karma is still there, and we still have to suffer to somewhat but Krishna says he, he minimizes our suffering. The door he cuts his finger, he thinks that it should have been my whole arm. That Krishna minimized my suffering. <coughs> so you, have, you still have free will. And you can choose whether you want to be a devotee and uh, not make, create more karma. Or whether you want to stay a demon and, to, and stay bound up in the material world. Here's a question. <coughs> we, are, we are treating Krishna as a, uh, as a part. Uh, devotees, they are treating as a Siva queen. But uh, as we are seeing that name, Krishna, name they are seeing like a son. Why? What's this question? I mean, now this repeated. What did he say? Anyway, well, you can't approach Krishna directly. You can't approach the Prime Minister directly. You have to go to his secretary or minister. So we can't approach Krishna directly. You have to have a spiritual master, a Guru Ashraya. This is the first principle. You have to accept the spiritual master. He's the via media to to take us to Krishna. It takes a pure devotee. You have to get the blessings, mercy of pure devotee to get the mercy of Krishna. And you have to get the mercy of Lord Nityananda to get the mercy of Radha and Krishna. And you have to get the mercy of the six called Swamis to get the mercy of Lord Nityananda. And you have to get the mercy of the Parampara, the Gurus and the line the Saibic succession. So no one can approach Krishna directly on their own initiative. It's like you can't become a doctor by reading the books and not going to school. You have to go to school and take direction from those who are professional doctors. Hope that answers your question. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Antara Bhagavad Gita Ki.